Namaste, and welcome to the third day of the sixth edition of the Ketevan Sacred Music Festival. Ketevan's aims has always been to celebrate interreligious coexistence by putting together soulful Western and Eastern sacred music programs from various traditions across the globe. In these three days, we are enjoying concerts, talks, and interviews shot in different heritage monuments in eight countries, in India, the US, UK, Argentina, Australia. We are honored to collaborate with over 100 artists and speakers with 16 productions that were specially recorded for this festival edition. Right now, I would like to introduce the Cardo Rocho Ensemble, performing Portuguese sacred music from the beautiful Quinta de Regaleira in Lisbon. I hope you enjoy this performance. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Anthony Fernandes. My name is Carmina Gonçalves. Um, and we are Cardo Roxo from Portugal. Yep. <laughs> I play viola da gamba, he plays bagpipes, bag and we both sing. Today we are uh, playing for you a very special concert uh, about the, the sacred tr traditions in Portugal. We have, we have songs that are played outside the churches, songs that are played inside the churches. In Portugal the traditions, the, 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 the sacred mu music, it's more related to, to the Catholic Church. Uh, so uh, it's all about, about Jesus and... and uh, and especially and the birth, saints. the birth of Jesus and Mary. Um, so basically, that's our uh, sacred music. We, we are here in uh, Quinta da Regaleira to present this concert to you. Quinta da Regaleira is a magical place located in Sintra, at the bottom of the Moon Mountain, and it's classified by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. It was built in the beginning of the 20th century by the eccentric millionaire. Antonio Augusto Carvalho Monteiro and designed by the architect and set designer Luigi Manini. Carvalho Monteiro was a very spiritual man. He was a member of the Masonry, so the entire palace and the gardens of the Regaleira are filled with symbols related to the Masonry, alchemy, Knight Templars and Rosicrucians. Also, the Italian architect Manini transposed all his knowledge and experience in stage design into this project. So all Quinta looks like a gigantic and crazy opera stage. You can see the palace is Gothic. Uh, the chapel, which is a Catholic chapel, um, is, uh, is Manuelino, which is a Portuguese style. Um, the gardens are Romantic and Roman, with many statues related to Roman and Greek mythology. Regaleira is a very mystical place, filled with tunnels and lakes and waterfalls and fountains and gardens and statues, but one of the most impressive and particular place is the, the initiation well. It's a ritual place with a, a, a huge spiral staircase to the bottom. And there's a lot of symbols um, inside the, the staircase. It's, it's really beautiful. And all these elements result in an extremely beautiful and wonderful and spiritual place.
It is my pleasure to introduce the Aksavali Choir from Georgia. This all-men choir will share with us Orthodox Georgian sacred chants. Please remember that in addition to the performances that you saw in this three-day festival, you can find on our website additional productions created for this online edition. Hello from the Aksa Valley Choir in Tbilisi, Georgia. We're delighted to participate again in the Ketavan World Sacred Music Festival in Goa, India. Two and a half years ago, three years ago actually, in 2018, we were the first Georgian choir to come to India and sing the troparion of St. Ketavan at the place where her holy relics are buried in the St. Augustine Monastery. This was a deep privilege for us and an honor for all Georgians that we were come, able to come and pay our respects to the Queen Martyr, St. Ketavan. Today we're going to present a program of sacred chants, polyphonic chants from the Middle Ages here in Georgia. And we are singing in the historic Shio Rime Monastery. Vi
Our next speaker is Dr. Craig Cook. He is the principal of the Woodstock School in Missouri, a scenic town at the foothills of the Himalayas. Dr. Cook has a wealth of experience in educational leadership and has moved from California to India in 2019. I will let him tell us about his philosophy as to why children need to be exposed to a genuine and deep appreciation of music. After Dr. Cook, there are two heartwarming performances by children's choirs, the Ektal Children's Choir Goa and the Woodstock School Choir. And next, we have a speaker from Australia who calls himself the Electronic Swagman. Raymond Hawkins says his project is dedicated to combining two great human impulses, travel and music. I'm honored to be part of the Katevan Sacred Music Festival. 
I think it's always good to ask ourselves, why are we here and what brings us together? First of all, music throughout history has been something that has brought the human group together in celebration, whether it be through ritual at the local level or through cyclical festivals that remind us of who we are in the group. Music gives us a place where people can converge. We then add to the mix religion and the sacred tones that burst with meaning for the hearer. Whatever one's religious upbringing, it's through the music that we touch God and have our spirits touch back in the same give and take which present themselves in the cacophony of sound found in the best of all musical expressions. Music also serves as a portal to all that is good in humanity. The ability to come together as one, even while from different backgrounds. The ability to touch the universe, to touch God, and to connect with others. Thus, a sacred music festival such as this is so relevant to teaching children about faith, not only of their own, but of so many others. It is this avenue by which we know and understand the other, what at first seems very different to us. These ideas are captured in the motto of the Ketevan Sacred Music Festival, a musical experience of coexistence. In these moments together, we revel in our coexistence across faiths and religions, recognizing the validity of all. I think one of the greatest gifts these sacred pieces teach us is to listen. Listening to others is in an ever increasingly polarized world is a lifelong skill that will set children apart as they interact with their peers in the 21st century. When I think of music, I think of the need to listen both externally and internally. We have to listen to the other, the note outside of oneself, and at the same time, listen to our own internal voices. What a great metaphor this is for following a practice of mutual respect with each other, and especially through our religious and cultural backgrounds, which are so close to our hearts. Being the head of an international school, such as Woodstock School in Missouri, India, these skills and gifts are essential training to students in ways that will contribute uniquely to the world in this present age. As a consumer myself of so many kinds of music, the gifts which music gives the hearer is ultimately, as I said, to listen. So listen to these notes, listen to the nuances and flow of the sound, listen to the conductor, to your fellow musicians. Listening as one of the greatest, greatest gifts brought to each hearer. We hear the beautiful sounds made by others, by God and even ourselves. This music is truly a gift. My favorite musical artist, Canadian folk singer Bruce Coburn used to end all of his shows with his song, Gifts. And it goes like this. Silver rain sings dancing rhyme, sunlight on blue water, rocky shore grown soft with moss, catches all our laughter. And it sends it back without its edge to strengthen us anew, that we may walk within these walls and share our gifts with you. So it's now our privilege to listen to these musical gifts that have come our way. Let's listen, listen to the music, listen to each other and to God's spirit in these beautiful notes. We're blessed by these next two performances today. First, by our very own Woodstock School Choir to be followed by a Goan Children's Choir named Ektal. Enjoy these gifts.
There. My name's Raymond and the Ketaban Sacred Music Festival have asked me to do a simple uh, introduction to the Singing to the Heart video as it appears on the, uh, the festival website. Singing to the Heart was an ambitious program that sought to use singing and music as a profoundly powerful tool to explore one of the most complex places on earth, the Australian desert. We traveled from Adelaide in South Australia. We spent five days in a little country town getting our repertoire together. And then we traveled deep into Aboriginal country, into cultures that had existed in this country for 60,000 years. We sang with Pitjantjatjara people in Uluru, we sang with uh, the, the Aranda people in Hermansburg, an old Lutheran missionary. And we used singing as a way to connect to those cultures and also to the landscapes in which we, we traveled. Some of those landscapes are almost two billion years old. We found that the simple experience of singing with other human beings in places of such enormous power was extremely rewarding and deeply emotional. I think the fact that we didn't try to process the place or to try to understand on an intellectual basis, but just experience something extraordinarily elemental of singing with other human beings and singing to other human beings. I think that's what gave the moment such import. 
and um, and it speaks to the power of music and the the power of singing in a group as a way to connect uh, human beings. Uh, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that you'll enjoy the documentary. It goes into some of the most remarkable country on earth, and to some of the most complex and oldest civilizations on earth. So thank you to the Ketavan Music Festival for the opportunity to present this, this short documentary and I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you. In the winter of 2019, a choir travelled from Adelaide in South Australia to Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. In the tradition of the song lines, where Aboriginal people sung up country in order to give it meaning and story, the choir didn't just travel into the physical heart of Australia, but into the heart of the matter, into the hearts of people and communities and profoundly beautiful landscapes. That's why we called it Singing to the Heart. Singing to the Heart, just the name itself says everything because you can reach into yourself and you can share what you have to give in a very nice way and you really feel like you have come to a special place and you're doing special things and it's just really uplifting. It's an opportunity to really open yourself up and join with others and with that comes a joy that comes straight from, from the heart. This is the heart of Australia, that's how I see it. So we're singing into the heart of Australia with kind of open hearts, open full hearts. sing with Aboriginal people is an enormous privilege. The experience of connecting with the Indigenous culture on this journey just does my heart good. It makes us very happy to see visitors coming to our country, but we also want to see the visitors to come and sit down with us and to learn about us, who we are and to learn about our custom and tradition. The sense of having Alison with us for this part has been really lovely. Particularly when they were singing to us, it was like that sense of singing to each other back and forth that I found very special. This emotional experience that one feels through singing in environments like this with people that we sing with, with the people who are the traditional owners of the lands here who are sharing with us their understanding of the land and what singing means. All of that is just a perfect opportunity to sing to the heart. This is not an empty country. This is full of chukurba, full of culture, and Aboriginal people are always willing to invite visitors to come and sit down and spend time with us on our country. Oh, such a vastness and an openness when you're outdoors and when you're surrounded by such beauty. It's, it's a very spiritual experience that you expand a lot more, that you, that you can sing a little bit louder or you can sing a bit higher or <laughs> you're just full of joy. Coming to Central Australia is, is remarkably different because of the quality of the silence here and the beauty of the landscape, the sheer scale of, of places that we go to, the, um, just the, the space. 
I think makes us listen differently, makes us listen more with more quality. I feel like we're in these big sacred places, singing big sacred songs in a way. And as we've traveled through each place, we've just had such a wide range of experiences, really. It's been just beautiful. Exactly as I hoped it would be. It's been everything I hoped. We are in the Museum of Christian Art in the beautiful town of Old Goa on the west coast of India. Goa is known not only for the spellbinding beauty of its beaches, but also for a set of religious monuments located here that were declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in the year 1986. Built between the 16th and 17th centuries by the Portuguese, these shrines are the reason Goa is often called Rome of the Orient. To close the Ketavan festival, we are presenting the world premiere of the Vox Clementis Cantata. In three parts, we will first see from Buenos Aires an introduction to the concept of universal brotherhood, followed by an explanation of the process involved in the composition of the Vox Clementis Cantata and the performance of this piece by the Goa University Choir and the festival ensemble. Be enthralled. Hello, my name is Eduardo Mangerotti. I'm a Roman Catholic diocesan priest and a theology professor from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm very grateful and happy to be a part of the Ketevan Sacred Music Festival and to be able to introduce Santiago Luzardi Girelli's Vox Clamantis Cantata that was specifically composed for this festival. In recent times, there are perhaps few interpreters of the gospel so in tune with the sensibilities of our time as Charles de Foucault. In his personal journey, from atheist to believer, to pilgrim and monk, we find the passionate search of someone who wishes to live more and more fraternally, someone who wants to be, as he claimed, a universal brother. The fact that he has searched to live this out in an interreligious context, prophetically anticipating his time, makes this search particularly illuminating for all of us. This experience is collected in the Catholic Church 20th century magisterium by Pope Francis, who closes his last encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, referring to Charles and his testimony of a fraternal life, embodied especially in contact with the poorest, in becoming one with them through a simple, meek, humble life. I think uh, Brother Charles would have liked to know that this mention in Fratelli Tutti is followed by a prayer. For him, prayer is the source and expression of that universal love, to the point that both are practically identical in his writings. I can think of no better way to finish this brief presentation. Lord, Father of our human family, you created all beings in equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit and inspire in us a dream of renewed encounter, dialogue, justice and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and a more dignified world, a world without hunger, poverty, violence and war. May our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown it in each of us, and thus forge bonds of unity, common projects, and shared dreams. Amen.
May God bless you and may you have a lovely time during the festival. Good evening. I would like to make an introduction to the Vox Clamantis Cantata, the piece we are presenting today. This piece is based on the life and mystical experiences of the French monk Charles de Foucault during his years living in isolation in the Sahara Desert in North Africa. For more than 20 years, Foucault lived as an hermit in the way as the ancient desert Christian fathers did. These early Christian monks, ascetics, lived in isolation in the desert in Africa around the third century after Christ. Much later, in the 20th century, Foucault exposed himself to the interaction with Muslim tribes and communities in North Africa. He linked his daily life and mystical experiences in the desert to a loving conversation, a kind interaction with the Muslim tribes. Foucault became a contemporary father. To find the meaning of life, he walked into the wilderness and decided to become a voice calling for peace and coexistence while Europe was fighting the First World War. He entered the silence of the heart and the mind while walking into isolation. Today, more than 100 years after he died, Foucault's concept of universal brotherhood is still the voice of calling in the wildness, which claims for the need of interreligious dialogue and cultural acceptance. His life is a living testimony and a path of coexistence among cultures and religions and inspires us at the Keteban Festival because that's our motto, that's our dream. Foucault became a human poem, materializing his dreams and his ideas into beautiful living acts. Islam shocked me profoundly, he wrote. The sight of their fate, of these people living in God's constant presence afforded me a glimpse into something greater and truer than earthly preoccupations. For me, the greatest challenge of composing the Vox Clamantis Cantata was finding the best way to materialize in sounds and atmospheres the so poetic life of this French monk. Recreating his solitude and the silence in the desert with music, songs and soundscapes May, may seem contradictory, but in fact, it's probably possible through certain compositional techniques. In the Vox Clamantis Cantata, we can hear that the compositional treatment combines a certain minimalism style with the Gregorian lyricism diatonic character, which seeks to represent the simple life of the monk. The musical texture is woven by a timbric pattern of superposition of unequal rhythms, superimposed chords, and diatonic melodies, almost in a Gregorian style. All these try to represent the stillness of the Sahara, the evolution of Foucault's ideas, and seeks to lead us to an experience of introspection and communion. Foucault's life inspired me since I was very young. When I was 20s, I read his biography, and I was living in an ecumenical monastery called Tese in South France. His experiences in the Sahara, his brave heart, his poetic life touched me deeply and inspired this composition. This cantata which we are presented today with the Goa University Choir seeks to honor the small, big soul man. As we said, Foucault spent more than 30 years in the wilderness with the hope of living his universal brotherhood concept in a very practical way, creating a path, sowing a seed in the desert, his life ended when he was killed as a martyr in 1916 by some of the same people that he loved. Among hundreds of writings and letters he wrote, I want to share one which I selected and put it into music on the Vox Clamantis Cantata, which we are presented today as the final concert of the Keteban Festival 2021. This beautiful text of the second movement of the cantata perfectly describes the poetry of Charles de Foucault's life. The text says, my life becomes more and more isolated and silent. 
more and more hidden and lost to sight. I am delighted to see myself become invisible. Love means obeying you, O oh God. I hope you enjoy the performance.